Hi, my name's Emma, and I'm a huge book nerd. You're my library, always so busy. Welcome to the first wrap up of 2021. Um, it has been a pretty good reading year so far, I'm not gonna lie. I started off the year strong. I feel like I am sticking with my 2021 reading resolutions, which is really exciting. So um, I'm gonna go through all of the books that I read and uh, there are a lot of them, so let's just get started. So the very first book that I read in January was Asada by Asada Shakur. This book immediately, right out of the gate, I was like, <laughs> incredible five stars fave book of the year which is ironic because you know first book that I've read but um, I think it holds its place there's one other contender in this stack which I will get to later but this book absolutely blew my mind so this is an autobiography by Asada Shakur who uh, used to be a Black Panther but she left the Black Panthers um, and then she was arrested wrongfully charged with a multitude of crimes that she didn't commit. Uh, she actually um, escaped from prison and then was named one of the FBI's most wanted. Um, I think, now I have to d double check this, I think she's still one of on the FBI most wanted lists. She was in 2013 at least, but she has political asylum in Cuba and that is where she wrote this book. And it is just absolutely mind-blowing, incredible, infuriating, it makes you really angry, and it should. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend picking this up. It reignites that fire under your ass, you know? So definitely a million thumbs up. Super cannot recommend it highly enough. The second book that I finally finished in January, and I say finally because I have been like slowly reading this over the past six months, and it's great that I've been slowly reading it because it's been, you know, inspiring me and teaching me about writing stuff. So like spacing it out has been great, but I am glad to finally have it uh, finished. And that is The Playwright's Guidebook by Stuart Spencer. This is probably my favorite book on playwriting that I've read so far. It's just really, it gives really practical advice. Um, and it's just, it's just really well done. So yeah, if you're looking for a book on playwriting, this is a really good one to check out. Then, perhaps appropriately, I read a play. It is The Mercy Seat by Neil Butte, and unfortunately, I didn't like this very much. I ended up giving this two stars. It's a two-person play about this couple who's, uh, they're, they're having an affair, so he's married to someone else, and this couple is the, the affair. And they work in the same office building um, and 9-11 happens and they're at her apartment but they're supposed to be in the office building so like everyone thinks that they might be dead and so they have this chance to like run away and start new lives together. And the premise sounded really interesting so I was excited for this and then I read it and it just felt like the whole play was an argument play of just these two people arguing in circles for a really long time and like the ending finally got there and was like okay I understand why this is a play now but it wasn't an enjoyable experience and I don't know maybe seeing it in a theater I would be like okay the payoff's worth it but reading it I was like I don't know payoff's not worth it and then I read a YA fantasy novel which is like what Emma's reading YA fantasy I know it's crazy stuff but I read the Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, and you guys, I loved it. I was like, honestly, really obsessed. So this has one of my favorite, just like back cover blurbs. It says, they killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury us, now we rise. It's basically in this fantasy world, there are a group of people who have magic, who are capable of magic, and the rest of the people are not capable of magic and the king has destroyed magic so he killed off all of the actual people who had become um, magi but their children are like uh, beings who who have the capacity for magic but don't have it activated yet so those people are still exist but they're like second-class citizens but there's basically a young woman in this who is one of those children whose mother was a magi and she has this magic in her deep down somewhere 
and she gets kind of roped into this uh, quest to bring magic back. Um, and it is just so fun. The world is just so rich and well built that it was just a lot of fun to spend some time in. And I'm definitely interested in reading the second one. I don't know if I'm like, I have to read the second one. So we will see what happens with that. But I gave this four stars. I really liked it. I'm really glad I read it. And of course the cover is insane. And then I read a book that has been staring at me from my shelf for a very long time and that is The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood and um, I talk more about this in an upcoming video so I'm actually not going to give you my wrap-up thoughts on this you're gonna have to wait for that other video which will be out in February I promise and then I read Anxious People by Friedrich Bachmann I First of all, was very excited to be getting a new Friedrich Bachmann. Absolutely. I love Friedrich Bachmann, one of my favorite authors. And this seemed like really different than any story he's told before. So it's about this bank robber who holds a bunch of people at an apartment viewing hostage. And all these people at the apartment viewing are sort of forced to get to know each other and see the humanity in each other that they might not otherwise see. I was completely blown away by this book. The writing is so quirky and interesting. Not all of Bachman's books are written in this way, which just makes me more impressed with his capabilities as a writer, um, because it's not like he just has one voice that he uses in all his books. He wrote this in a really interesting way, and I know a lot of people hate that. I've seen so many reviews of this book that were like, the writing style drove me nuts, I just couldn't read it, but I was obsessed with it. And I cried on page 23, and many other times throughout the book, but like, just thought it was worth noting that I cried so early on. Because I think that Bachman just has this really unique ability to illustrate mundane, everyday human experiences in a way that just like it absolutely breaks your heart it's like you're reading the book and you're like yes yes Bachman this is what it's like to be a human being and it's uh, it's just it's such a cool experience and I'm obsessed with this and I gave it five stars this is the other contender next to Asada for best book of the year I think Asada is still in first place but this is I just loved this so much and it holds a very close place in my heart now. And then I read the first 80 pages or so of Dear Emma by Katie Heaney and then I DNF'd this. I couldn't finish it, I couldn't get into it. This is a retelling of Emma by Jane Austen um, in which there's this character who has like an advice blog at her college and then she's also in like her real life persona is Harriet so her online blog persona is Emma and her real life persona is Harriet which I thought was really interesting like that part of it I was like this is so fun that we have Emma and Harriet as the same person just different like online persona versus real life persona but the writing was just terrible and it was like it felt like it, it was written by a person who doesn't understand the internet and decided to write a whole book about the internet. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. So I gave up. Um, and then I read another YA fantasy. I know, like absolutely crazy. And surprise, I liked this one too. It's Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is about uh, an orphan boy who has really vivid dreams and he becomes a librarian and everyone kind of makes fun of him and doesn't like him but he like dreams of this lost city but he doesn't know much more about it but he has this memory this dream of this lost city and he goes on a quest to to go to this lost city simultaneously there is another story happening of this uh, goddess um, she's blue, like literally her skin is blue, um, and she 
has the ability to manipulate dreams. And I think saying too much more than that, we get into spoilery territory, but this world was so fun. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, first 60 or so pages, I was like, I don't know, might DNF it. But then we got into like the, the real world of the book and I got, I became obsessed. I really enjoyed especially the dream world like there was something so fun about being in these characters heads and like watching them build dreams like that was wild to me i loved it and i honestly think that i might pick up the second book i put it on i put the audiobook on hold on the libby app at my library and i think i will listen to that when it becomes available because i really want to continue living in this world. I gave this four stars and it was really good. So the last book that I read in January is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This book is a thriller about a bunch of wedding guests who are on this island off the coast of Ireland for this wedding. And I hated this book. <laughs> I just finished it this morning so that I could film this video today and I, when I tell you, I started this a week ago and I was like, oh I have a whole week left to read the last book on my January TBR, like this is going to be easy peasy, I might be able to like finish another one after this, I'm going to fly through it because it's a thriller. And I could not get through this, I was so bored, it didn't feel in any way suspenseful and it did this thing that really made me mad. In my Goodreads review I wrote it's the thriller that called Wolf because it does this thing where it's like, I, I, I will give a specific example from the book and this is not a spoiler in any way, but basically this character like walks into the kitchen and then the book is like, and there was a man with a knife covered in blood. And then the very next line is like, and then I realized that it was the chef and he was carving up a leg of lamb. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, it's trying to get me scared and freaked out about ordinary things, but it's not like written in a spooky, suspenseful tone. The tone is almost like a romance, almost. It's definitely like contemporary fiction, for sure. And then there are just these things thrown in there, like a gargoyle of a face appeared at the window, and then it was just the next guest arriving. And it's like, <sighs> Am I supposed to be in suspense? Are, am I supposed to be scared? Because you keep setting up these things to be scary and then revealing them immediately to be nothing at all. So when later in the book you're like, oh, we saw someone approaching out of the darkness, I already know you're gonna be like, and it was just to the host. So I'm not scared. Like it completely ruined any kind of suspense that there could have been. And I was so mad about it. <laughs> There was one good twist in this book. I think the two twists that followed were really contrived and I didn't like them, but the first one was really good. If you read this, you, then you know what I'm talking about, hopefully, and you can let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. But I think this book um, is crazy overrated. I'm really mad about it because I was so excited and I wanted it to be good and it's not. This is the same way that I felt about uh, the first Riley Sager book I read. Um, couldn't stand it. It was the final girls. I hated the final girls. Ugh. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna put this down before I throw it. I gave it two stars, was not a fan, and those are all of the books that I read in January. I hope that you enjoyed watching this wrap-up video. I hope that you got some thoughts for next books to read or maybe even some to just nix off your tbr i would love to hear what you read in january or if you've read any of these let me know what you thought about them i know especially anxious people is like super polarizing so even if you didn't like it let me know down in the comments i would love to chit chat about it because i think it's so interesting thank you so so much for watching i really appreciate it please like and subscribe and leave some comments down below and i will see you in the next one Bye. Now I was headed to the bus stop, Maddie.